Jonathan Martinez. And I'm Simone D'Alba. Tonight we are following developing news on the northwest side where a water rescue for a teenager has been underway. Let's head over to the live desk where Melissa Vega has been following this story. She joins us with the latest. Melissa. Well, we are very happy to report that that teen has been rescued. The fire chief is saying just moments ago that it is a miracle he survived. We want to take a closer look of the teen believed to be 13 or 14 years old being rescued. Earlier this evening, first responders say that he was walking along the creek near Newsom, close to Vance Jackson with his family when he slipped. The fire chief saying he traveled about a mile and a half to two miles underground, was washed up and part of the drain drainage ditch on the Woodlawn Lakeside. The teen heard first responders voices, saw the lights and they were able to get him. It was a miracle, absolute miracle. Um, the mom and the daughter, as you could imagine, were inconsolable uh, at the scene. So to bring them together and have that reunion, it's pretty special. The fire chief saying the teen has some cuts and bruises from the debris, but his lungs are clear. He's conscious. He's alert right now. He's at University Hospital getting checked out. That's the latest from the life desk. It's a labor of love, making sure every detail is just right. I just hope it gives the families a little bit of peace. That's what keeps Sean Peacock and his team at Jazz Graphics going. They're in Eastman, Georgia, but their hearts are 17 hours away in Uvalde. I get up and pray for them. I stop during the day and pray for them. Peacock is referring to the 19 children and two teachers killed in the Robb Elementary mass shooting. Last Monday, he received a message from a victim's relative. They asked if Jazz Graphics could make their family a memorial bench. It's a tribute he first made for his mother, out of a bench his late sister owned. It was an overflowing, overwhelming of emotions. I had to get up from my desk because I was crying so hard. His emotions led him to post about the tribute on Facebook, and it didn't take long for his town of about 5,000 to offer their help. There was several posts came right after my post that said, we'd like to donate towards this. There were so many people who wanted to donate towards these benches that Peacock actually made a GoFundMe. Within three days of when he was first asked about the benches, it had actually raised more than $20,000, meaning every single one of those 21 families will get their bench for free. I think it's miraculous. I don't think it's by accident. <clears throat> I think God's moved in a lot of people's lives. Peacock is working with one of the family members of the victims to let every family affected know about the offer. He's already finished several. The number on the bench represents when he completed each one. As you see, every bench has personal details, including a photo and a message of love. You are loved beyond words and this. He says they hope to deliver the benches in person in a few weeks, adding they'll be stopping along the way to have people pray over them before delivering it to families who are grieving the unimaginable. On the outside, it's a rundown 97 Chevy truck. I wish we were able to sleep in the bed, you know. On the inside, it's Jennifer Hanlon's home. It's bad. She and her husband make the most of the cramped space. A small suitcase for clothes. This spot's for toilet paper. Cup holders double up for hygiene. Life in the worn down truck is possible, but Jennifer calls it miserable. It's bad. Sometimes you have to stay awake all night. It's been five months since the couple lost their housing. Jennifer's teenage daughter is now living with a friend. I didn't know what else to do. You know, I wanted to give up because we didn't, we weren't given a chance. But just when all hope was lost, her sister-in-law, an old high school friend, showed a level of compassion they've never seen before. A chance to get out of the truck and into a real bed at an all expenses paid hotel for two weeks. My heart just melted down and I've never had anybody hold me like that, never. So it was very surprising when she just gave us the key and said, you know what, I got it for two weeks for you. Christina Alakinas didn't know about the Cash for Kindness nomination. Ryan Wolf from Fox San Antonio, I'm here because oh, she thinks the You look surprised. She tried to walk away. <laughs> she thinks the world of you. It's because I appreciate everything you've done for us, Chris. No, Chris, like, <laughs> it helped us a lot to lay out a bed and take a bath, Chris. You know, it sucks being in the vehicle. Watch what happens when I tried to award her $500. This is from us to you. They wanted okay, to we'll nominate. Give it to them because I That's don't. That's for you to do. 
that's Jennifer, that's for you. The back and forth ending with Jennifer getting the money, and she admits they could really use it. I used to have money in my hands. You know, I can't take that from somebody that's helped, you know. But I am gonna get a room because you know what, I could use a shower. A local couple is recounting the devastation of losing their daughter to a life of drug addiction and sex trafficking. As part of our No Child Sold series in partnership with Ransom Life, they are sharing some of the lengths they went through to rescue their daughter from the streets. It's a life. Our world was spinning out of control. No parent should have to experience. How do we make sense of this? All of a sudden we've got, like, I'm, she's on Craigslist and I'm like, what do I do with my daughter? Their daughter, who we are only identifying as Britta, dropped out of college when she was 18. At that point, she was homeless, basically living in different homes. The couple is talking about how they lost Britta to a life of drug addiction and sex trafficking. She would call these people her friends. The, her devotion to the people that are hurting her. She definitely left many times trying to make the right steps. Uh, the only time she was showing that she wanted to return to these difficult things was just after back with drugs. Elsa and Charles are recalling some of the rescues to save their daughter from the streets. One of them in Los Angeles, face to face with a trafficker. I want, we want our daughter. This is another one where we're fighting to get our daughter back from another brute that's got our daughter. Charles goes to try and rescue our daughter again. This big muscle guy beats my husband, beats and beats and beats and beats and beats him. And Charles just takes it, just, takes the beating nonstop until the guy is tired. And then he says, okay, now give me my daughter. Britta's in the shower, drugged up. And he's like, hey, dad. And so he just wraps just her in a, a towel. He wraps her, her in a towel, and put her in car. puts her in the car and picks me up. And we go to the airport. The rescues went on for six years. Elsa and Charles say the drugs kept Britta going back. She told me a story of that. I, I, I locked myself in the bathroom so I would not go get drugs. And it was killing me all night to stay in the bathroom. She so would tell stories like that. So the, the addictions can be so strong. Britta was only 24 years old when she died of an overdose in Florida. The couple is now raising awareness with other parents on the dangers and the challenges they experienced. We're talking about things that happen very subtly over the course of time. So as far as the education, it is so so important that all parents are hearing. These are, these are things every one of us needs to learn. We were intentional about every zip code we ever lived in. When Britta was in addiction, I ended up walking the streets with a lot of addicts. And I found out that the prostitutes and the drug addicts are somebody else's daughters and somebody else's sons. They're real people that are hurting. It's a reality children and teens are victims of every day. So the perpetrators know if they can get somebody hooked on drugs, that's why we have to be vigilant. Nonprofits like Ransom Life are on a mission to share resources with families and support survivors through counseling and mentoring. They trust this person that they're communicating with. And that's what's really terrifying when you think about it. And that's the reason that almost every kid is at risk of being trafficked. We're hoping that by educating San Antonio and by increasing vigilance, that more crimes will be reported more potential victims will be saved before it's too late. It's awareness Charles and Elsa want every parent to know about. I did everything I was physically able to do, and uh, I definitely dreamed of a different result. Absolutely heartbreaking to hear their words. And Charles and Elsa are using their tragedy to make sure other families don't have to go through the same thing they did. Make sure to head to foxsanantonio.com to see some of the warning signs they say every parent needs to look out for. You will also find more information and links on Ransom Life's No Child Sold campaign.